Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, a fly fish fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Today, another Stillwater Lake special. Um, it's a, a and a staple, a leech, um, another leech pattern. I've done a couple of leech patterns in the last little while here, um, and the reason is I really love fishing leeches in the fall, um, especially right at dusk. Just they just uh, I just love it. Um, the last one I did was my uh, my jungle leech. Uh, I'm not sure when this video is going to come out, but the jungle leech this this one gets hammered a lot. This one here. Um, I found it has, doesn't get hammered quite as hard, but it, I find that it, it's actually a little bit more successful than the uh, than the uh, jungle uh, my jungle leech, and because uh, I think this one's not only taken for a leech, but it's also taken for a damselfly, um, and it that's the that's the fly right there. Um, you can put a bead head on it if you want. I don't like it with a bead head, um, and it's basically all it is is it's a woolly bugger, but it's got a, it's a flash side woolly bugger, right? So it's going to have a piece of lateral scale in the sides on both sides, and I find that just a little bit of extra flash really helps. But I don't usually I don't put any flash on the tail with these. Uh, sometimes I'll put like one strand of a green flash just to to get it out, or I might even put one strand of the blue. Uh, and this happens to be the Zemperfly, uh, um, whoa, where are you there? The Colorado mix. Um, but yeah, like one, but one strand, that's it. Like don't, don't over, overdo it with these. So, all right, so let's get going. No more time to yap. So in the vise, I will be placing a Hens BL724 in a size 10. So that's that right there for the tail just some marabou in green i love this pattern in black as well uh it gets absolutely uh, smoked the black one but i think it's uh, almost taking it the same way as it's this one it's just this green one i find a little bit more versatile because like i said i think they're taking it for a damsel i think they might even be taking it for a dragon um and they're definitely taking it for a leech right so um, for the tail, uh, some, some marabou. For the body, some uh, Arizona semi-seal and peacock. Um, for the, la uh, the side flash, it's just some lateral scale. And for the hackle, just some dyed green grizzle, grizzly. Alrighty, let's get... Oh, and the Zemperfly Nano Silk in gray. Um, the reason I tied it in, in the gray is because I just... Uh, I got a couple of bulk spools of the gray and the white and I just use it up for everything and then I just uh, use some, sorry, some felt pens to uh, color the, uh, the thread on the head when I'm done, right? Just makes it easier. I don't uh, change a lot of spools that way. I mean, I've got a lot, but uh, I just don't bother. I use the white a lot and the gray a lot just because I can, like I said, I just take a, a felt and Go. So now I'm going to leave myself about that much room, about two eye eye lengths room. I'm just going to straighten that out for you guys. But two eye lengths room in the front there, just to because uh, that's where I'm going to build my uh, uh, my. I want a little bit of a head um, with the uh, with the grizzly. Like I want a little bit of extra there. So piece of marabou. Um, this marabou that I've got right here, I. Uh, I usually only use the hens marabou. I just absolutely love that stuff. But this is some old, um, I think it's Superfly. Yeah, Superfly. Um, but I ran out of the green in the uh, in the hens. So I guess I just got to do what I got to do. Um, so I'm not going to waste the feather. I'm going to take, and, and I actually like, not only that it wastes it if you just take the end like that, right, and put it on. It's not as supple. It doesn't move as much. So I'm just going to, do the peel and fold technique. Peel on one side, fold, peel off one side, fold, peel off one side, fold, peel off one side, fold, and one more. And that takes pretty well one side of the feather. Okay? And I'm just going to uh, transfer that in my other hand. I want a bit of a longer tail, so about one and a half times this shank. So there's one and a half so about there yeah about there so i'm going to cut just in front of my fingers there and uh just gonna just gonna nip that again and just stay but like i said stay back a bit you don't have to stay back too far but 
So just stay back a bit. Oh, that's tied in a bit. I should have put down a little bit of wax. I did now. Keep your marabou on the top like that. And I like just do an open wraps until I get to the back. And then roughly where the barb would be if this was a barbed hook. And then under the tail, over the tail, under the tail, over the tail. At least a couple of times. A couple of open wraps on the way back up again. So... There we go. So now, just for video sake, I will put in one strand of the blue. Just to show you guys what it looks like. So I'm just going to tie the one strand of the blue in, and then I'll train half of it to one side, half to the other side. Cut it to length. Done. That's it. Like I said, really just just an additional little piece of flash but not much I don't want it much in there so lateral scale there. and then where's my there's the feather I prepared I'm going to I won't need all of that but I will go right from the tip because I don't want it too big so I'm just gonna so the last thing wrapped is first thing in, right? For the beginners out there. I'm just moving that feather out of the way. Just tie that in again. And then the lateral scale, I'll bring the lateral scale in. I'm gonna cut it in half here. And just gonna lay it in on one side, just catch it one side bring it back and make sure it's laying right on the side yeah see how that's laying right along the side that's what you want now i'm just gonna loose wraps go back up the other lateral scale and tie it in on your side now this side get that hackle out of my way damn thing caught up in my bobbin so just again just tie that in make sure it stays on the side of the hook if it doesn't just give it a bit of a twist up if you have to all the way back to the tie-in point of the tail leave it there so that's that portion now I'm gonna dub in my dubbing now the other way that I, I have done this as well is using like the uh, this year the Zemperfly um, 15 mil chenille um, but for this one I'm gonna just do the dubbing and then I'm just going to flatten my thread a little bit even though I'm not gonna, I'm not doing a split thread technique here but I'm just gonna flatten it just because I find that it grabs better just wax my oops, sorry guys wax my thread a bit I'm gonna just focus that just a bit there Sheesh, sensitive today. Um, and, and then I'm just going to hand, hand dub this on. And the reason is I don't want this uber scraggly when it goes on. Um, if I'm doing a dubbing loop or a, a split thread technique, it gets a little hairier, which I love. But for this fly, I don't want that. So, and I don't want a thick body on this one either. So just a covering is what you want here. So just wrap that forward. See how that's not too scraggly? It's just given a, a body. A couple more turns, a little tiny bit more right there. Basically wanna to go to the where I stopped with the materials, so about there. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my lateral scale and I'm gonna lay it right along the side catch it in make sure it's right along the side there which it is then sorry I have to turn the vise on you guys here but I'll show you once it's in turn it again hold it with your forefinger just give it a couple of turns make sure it's where you want it right along the side see it is a little bit up on the back end there so I'm just gonna get let's give that a bit of a twist it's not too bad there not gonna notice that anyway once it's in few more 
good wraps cut off my lateral scale keep those little pieces for the next one take my hackle one full right at the back and then just like a bully bugger come forward with it all the way and then once you get to the head here two to three wraps one holding all your material back if you can three yeah that'll be enough don't want to overdo it I mean you do want a bit more on the head but you don't want to overdo it either so and then just fold everything back nip off your stem again keep that if you uh, if you tie larger flies keep that piece that I just cut off don't uh, throw it away All right so okay stroke everything back here Just build a little bit of a head. It doesn't have to be a big head. Just a little bit. Make sure that it's 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 uh, training all those hackle fibers back like that. I like that that swept back motion a little bit. And do a five, six, seven turn whip finish. Nip that off. Take your head cement of choice. Just a little dab. Just a little dab. This is this is the toughest part, believe it or not, for me because uh, I'm blinded in one eye. So for me, it's a little a little difficult seeing that. Uh, sometimes I end up uh, putting it onto the onto the feathers, which I don't like. Right. So quite often you'll see that I'll just put it right on the on a thread before I whip finish so yeah so that's it um oh, that little piece of blue down the blue flash on this side kind of got caught underneath that marabou just there we go so so yeah that's it uh, it's just it's a fairly simple fly to tie um really effective and like I said I, I think they're taking it not only for leech but they're also taking it for a damsel maybe even a dragon doubtfully the dragon but definitely a damsel or a uh, or a leech um, I like having the tail quite a bit longer than the body, like one and a half to almost two times, because I'm, I find if I'm getting a false hit, I can always cut the the uh, the, the flash with a pair of scissors or whatever on the or nippers on the water, and then just tear the tail shorter if I need to, if I'm getting false hits. But a lot of times that longer tail will give a part a lot more movement, and uh, you'll get more hits out of it. So, All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give her a thumbs up. Uh, if you subscribed already, thank you very much. If you haven't, please consider doing so. Once I reach a thousand subscribers, I will be giving away a copy of uh, the books I wrote, which are right out here: the Insect Guide and the Freshman Fly Fisher. Um, and I will also be giving away a selection of the flies tied on this channel. So, spread the word, get your friends to come on over and uh, like the channel, and. Uh, yeah, hopefully I'm uh, helping you guys out and giving you guys some ideas and and teaching you a few things if you're new and uh, even if you're uh, if even if you're a seasoned veteran, hopefully um, I can teach you a few things. And I mean I know I I learn a lot from watching videos myself. So, tie lines, everyone.